This is a bat called Pallid, and the Pallid bat is very different from our other bats because it does not hunt for flying insects. It picks up invertebrates that live on the ground. You're falling asleep. Wake up. <laughs> um, yeah, look at those ears, right? So those ears are quite large, um, excellent for hearing. Sometimes people think bats with really big ears echolocate better. But actually, bats with really big ears either echolocate less or more quietly. And so for the pallid bat, it's looking for grasshoppers and Jerusalem crickets and large beetles. They can eat scorpions. They can eat centipedes. They're flying low. They're flying slow. And they're listening for those insects to move around in the plants. And then they land on them or land next to them and jump on them, grab them with their teeth, and they can jump up from the ground with that large insect in their mouth and carry him away someplace where they're a little bit safer. <clears throat> it's not really very safe for a pallid bat to be hunting down on the ground because there's more predators there that could catch it. So the pallid bat also can put out a bit of a skunky odor. Uh, and yeah, I'm thinking some of the predators are like, mm, maybe you taste bad. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the pallid bat, when it lives around people, has a thing about stucco. They really like stucco front entryways. They're kind of cave-like, you know, and they have nice little corners to tuck away in. So the pallid bat grabs their, say, Jerusalem cricket, um, jumps up off the ground with it in its mouth, flies someplace high, lands on the stucco over the front door, Tears off all the parts they don't like, the heads, the tails, right, the wings, whatever. Drop those, eat the good part, go on their way. And then the humans wake up in the morning and oh, there's all these insect parts on the porch. <laughs> and they have no idea why. And it would be a, a visit from a pallid bat. Do they live around here? They absolutely do. Oh. Yep. Uh, yeah, I periodically get calls from people. Uh, I know it's some kind of a bat, and there's all these bug parts. Mm. <laughs> no question. It is a pallid. They are a grassland and desert animal. So here, grasslands, eating the grasshoppers and such. In the desert, they're going to eat a few more of those scorpions. Right. Um, they are a species of concern in California be for habitat loss has hit their population pretty hard. Uh, grasslands, right? We tend to build houses on grasslands. Uh, and uh, they're also being proposed as California's state flying mammal. <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So that's our pallid bat. OK. He looks a little scared. Is he scared? <laughs> no. No? Mm-mm. Nah, she knows the drill. If she was scared, she would be either biting on me or she would definitely be trying to get away. Because you're not even holding her. I'm not even holding her. Oh, I know what I want to, uh, other thing I wanted to tell you. One of my most frequent questions, why do bats hang upside down? Right? So notice the toes. You see her toes are very, very hooked. Once she hooks on, she can completely relax all of the muscles throughout her body. And uh, that's conservation of energy. So she would burn fewer calories. But it also puts her in position to drop to fly. And that's more efficient than trying to jump to fly. And then third, if you're in a crack or a crevice and you're hanging head up, you can't see. But if you're hanging head down, you can. So those are three reasons why a pallid battle, or well, all bats, will hang upside down. They do turn over, though, when it's time to use the bathroom, right? So they don't soil themselves. You can see the little breathing going on there. What's the bat guano load on, under the... The causeway? Yeah. 
You know, the guano looks...